Jonah is presented as a real, historical figure, an Israelite prophet and writer of the Bible book that bears his name. His story unfolds in the 8th century BCE, during the reign of Jeroboam II, a period when the northern kingdom of Israel enjoyed relative prosperity but was also spiritually wayward. Jonah, the son of Amittai, hailed from Gath Hefer, a town not far from the area later known as Galilee. The biblical account in the book of Jonah reveals deep lessons about obedience, humility, compassion, and the boundless mercy of Jehovah God. Jehovah's Witnesses hold that the authenticity and historicity of the book of Jonah is firmly established by the fact that Jesus himself referred to Jonah's experience as a genuine event. In Matthew chapter 12 verses 39 to 41 and Luke chapter 11 verses 29 to 32, Jesus compares his own coming death and resurrection to Jonah's three-day period in the belly of the huge fish. In this way, Jonah's experience isn't regarded as a myth or a mere parable. Instead, it stands as a real-life account that carried prophetic weight. This underscores the importance of viewing Jonah not as a reluctant character in a tall tale, but as a sincere prophet struggling to align his will with that of his God. The storyline begins when Jehovah assigns Jonah a task. He is to go to Nineveh, the capital city of Assyria, and proclaim a message of doom because of its pervasive wickedness. Nineveh was known for its might, luxury, and often cruelty. To someone from Israel, the prospect of warning such a formidable enemy nation, and one that posed a genuine threat to Jonah's own people, seemed daunting and counterintuitive. Jehovah's Witnesses highlight that Jonah's initial reaction was to flee in the opposite direction, boarding a ship headed for Tarshish, possibly a distant location in the western Mediterranean. This attempt to escape his commission didn't stem from disbelief in God's power. Rather, it seems Jonah either lacked compassion for the Ninevites or doubted the wisdom of extending mercy to such a violent nation. Of course, as the account goes, Jonah's flight did not go unnoticed by Jehovah. A violent storm arose, placing the ship in grave danger. When the superstitious sailors realized Jonah was the cause of this calamity, since Jonah himself confessed he was running away from the command of his God, they reluctantly cast him into the sea. Instead of drowning, Jonah found himself swallowed by a specially prepared large fish. In the belly of that creature, he had three days and three nights to reflect on his actions, his attitude, and his responsibilities before God. Jehovah's Witnesses often emphasize the heartfelt prayer recorded in Jonah chapter 2. In that prayer, we see Jonah's repentance and humility. He acknowledges Jehovah's sovereignty and calls out to him for deliverance recognizing that salvation truly belongs to Jehovah. When the fish finally vomited Jonah onto dry land, safely returned and given a second opportunity, he obediently made his way to Nineveh. He proclaimed the message that in forty days the city would be destroyed if the inhabitants did not change their ways. Astonishingly, the people of Nineveh, from the greatest to the least, took Jonah's warning seriously. They fasted, donned sackcloth, and demonstrated heartfelt repentance. Even the king of Nineveh rose from his throne, humbled himself, and urged his subjects to abandon their evil ways. Witnesses view this response as evidence that even those seemingly far removed from Jehovah's standards can be moved to repentance when warned in a direct, honest manner. What happens next is a profound lesson in the mercy of God. Seeing the genuine change in the hearts of the Ninevites, Jehovah decided to spare them from disaster. Instead of rejoicing at this display of compassion, Jonah became irritated. Here, Jehovah's Witnesses see a key element of the account. God's desire is not just to save people from destruction, but also to mold the character of his servants, shaping them to reflect his own qualities. The final chapter of Jonah shows the prophet sulking outside the city, upset that Nineveh was spared. Jehovah kindly but firmly corrected Jonah's perspective, using the illustration of a bottle gourd plant that sprang up overnight and then quickly withered. Jehovah taught Jonah the value of having compassion for people who do not know right from wrong. It wasn't only Israel who mattered to God, his concern extended to all peoples, including the thousands in Nineveh who were not able to distinguish their right hand from their left, implying spiritual ignorance rather than willful wickedness. Jehovah's Witnesses draw multiple lessons from the book of Jonah. It illustrates Jehovah's vast mercy and patience, not only toward the repentant sinner but also toward the erring servant who has a hardened or selfish viewpoint. It also teaches that no culture or nation stands beyond the reach of divine compassion if they choose to turn around and seek God. Additionally, it highlights the importance of obedience, 
trust in God's moral judgments, and a readiness to carry out his assignments without prejudice or self-interest. Above all, the book of Jonah reassures us that Jehovah is good and ready to forgive, Psalm chapter 86 verse 5, and that he deeply cares about the eternal well-being of all humankind. In the literature of Jehovah's Witnesses, the account of Jonah is frequently cited to show that genuine repentance can change the outcome of Jehovah's judgments, and it underscores that Jehovah is the ultimate judge who perfectly balances justice with mercy. Jonah's life, therefore, serves as a timeless lesson. If a prophet who faltered can learn humility and compassion, then anyone can refine their attitudes, appreciate God's mercy, and find greater purpose in fulfilling God's will. Please share and like and please subscribe.